Hi, this is Buffy Fest. We're here at San Diego Comic Con with Weed and Burst costume designer Shauna Tripsick. Hi. Nice to meet you. you too. So, tell us, when designing costumes, what's more important, being on trend or staying true to the character? Oh, absolutely, the character. It doesn't. No trend in the world matters as long as it, you're pulling the the character out of the actor that you want to create. And many times in a fitting. I'll get an actor dressed and they're like, now I know who this person is because they put on the clothes, whether it's schlumpy or spike heels or whatever, they're like, ah, this is who I'm supposed to be. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, how often do writers give specific requests for the costuming? Any examples of memorable Weedoverse outfits that were specifically created by the writer? Well, um, Inara's dress was supposed to be green, I think, or red or blue or something like that. It says she comes out in this stunning red dress, and I said, well, how about gold? So they had to change a line in the script. So sometimes lines do dictate what they're supposed to wear. And um, Jane's hat, um, it just said Jane's hat, but it said, you know, made with loving care by his mother. And so to me, that meant it should be knit and something warm. Like my grandmother used to knit me these little mittens for, for um, uh slippers for my for Christmas so that's instantly what we had to go for so there wasn't making orange and no. red no. <laughs> no I did do a sketch and did do a watercolor and gave it to Joss so he knew what he was getting but yeah yeah it's great what is it like when you see so many people at conventions like these wearing Jane hats well it's been about seven years right since Firefly and there are so many Jane hats here every five seconds I'm seeing them I feel like a rock star I think it's the coolest thing ever and, and like people don't even know and I'm like oh cool you're wearing a Jane hat you're like yeah so who are you <laughs> but it's like it to me it's like we this is so much fun I'm you know because I, I I'm in this business because I love it because I love the the fever of Comic-Con I love I love film I love television I love costumes I'm just as big a fan as everybody else so when I see when I saw someone dressed like Kaylee yesterday and I was like hi you're like Kaylee and they're like yeah so <laughs> who are you <laughs> I'm sure if they realized they'd be like you created this outfit right yeah. and, and I'm thrilled and I'm yeah. absolutely thrilled and I saw a little kid dressed like Dr. Horrible and I'm like oh my gosh you're so cool <laughs> speaking of Dr. Horrible how was working on such a low budget a spontaneous project like that you couldn't have had a lot of time to prep um, it was an eight-day shoot and probably a, um, maybe a five-day prep and um, we had about $400 uh, budget for costumes yeah, and um, and so what that was used basically was for to buy the t-shirts and things like that and, and the transfer paper, but my husband designed all the graphics. Um, we printed them on the computer and I ironed them on, on my desk because I don't have an ironing board. Brilliant. And, um, and, the, and the jacket, as everybody knows, is from Alien Resurrection and also Firefly. It's the same jacket. We would just keep using the same one. But, um, but Joss's original sketch for Dr. Horrible was a classic doctor's jacket and um, and I, I got some research from different comic books and, and, and sold them on the old-fashioned mad scientist thing which just happened to be the same as the ones that we had been using before I don't know why I just keep sort of going back to that one I need to stop he keeps using the same horse it was an angel and Buffy and you know so I, I guess well, it worked. yeah we both need to move on I guess I'm um, speaking of the lab coat yes. it, Obviously, it's symbolic that it turns from white to red. Were you in charge of figuring out how his turn to evil was going to work out, going from white to red, or was that Joss's idea to, to know, move I him? I don't remember specifically. I think it was Joss. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Joss. Um, and we basically took his white jacket and dipped it in, um, in Rit dye. Oh, okay. uh, I mixed a few different colors to make that sort of blood red. Um, I would have to read the script again. Okay. But I think it was Joss. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And the next question, really, we're switching to Angel now, season four. Uh, Charisma Carpenter was pregnant. Was it a challenge to do all the cover-ups and, and try to figure out how to hide the pregnancy a certain time? It was a challenge, but also awesome. Yeah. Because it's like, um, oh, boy, you know, she went from this perfectly stealth right. body to where I was able to use all this drapey material and, and, and exotic fabric. So it was both a joy and, and a challenge. I yeah. And she's so wonderful to us. She was really, really good to our department. So. Now, Spike's coat. Yes. In season five of Angel, which is when the, when you started in Angel, right? Oh no, it was four. four. Five, yeah, yeah. So that's when you started working yeah. on Spike, though. Yeah. Um, there have always been rumors that the original Buffy coat needed to be replaced. Is that true? Yes. Was it difficult to match? Um, it was in that we wanted to make sure that it hung the same and had the same shaping in the back and et cetera, et cetera. Um, Jonathan Logan, who also built the brown coat, <coughs> excuse me, for Mal also built the coat for Spike and multiples, uh, multiple coats. And he also built some leather jackets for Angel as well. So um, he's a great artisan and um, we just, we fitted on Spike, did some alterations, fitted on Spike, did some alterations till we found the right drape and movement. So the Avengers, yes. we know that your awesomely never realized Wonder Woman costume just got released to the public. 
anything you can say about the Avengers? No, um, I found out along with the rest of the society last <laughs> yesterday during the panel that he is officially writing the Avengers and directing it. Um, I, I would be up against the designer of Iron Man and Captain America and Thor and the Incredible Hulk. So um, I would love it, obviously, but I also understand that Joss needs to do what the studio wants. So, But you'd be interested in doing oh superhero. <laughs> We're voting for Yeah, you. just a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody lift up a prayer. Yeah. So of all the Alfreds of the Whedonverse, do you have a particular favorite? Of Whedonverse? Well, I loved Illyria. Um, I loved, obviously, my wedding dress on Anara, which I completely cut up and re-sewed, and people thought I was nuts. Um, and um, I love Kaylee's uh, layered cake dress. Um, I love doing um, the space outfit on the Bounty Hunter in Firefly. Um, Dollhouse, um, I got to build um, a few of um, Miracle's uh, costumes. Um, so that, that was great, because she has this gorgeous sort of Marilyn Monroe figure that you don't always get in television. So I had a lot of fun with a lot of making a lot of her costumes and designing those. Well, thank you so much for thank speaking you. with us. Have a great panel, which is the costume designer. What is the name of the panel? Costume design for television. Yeah. Which is in about an hour. Yes, it is. So right. we'll let you go. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Good thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thanks for meeting you.